The actual process of detoxing, how does it affect the way that we crave food? Great. Yeah. I mean, look, I, as I said, the, the toxins make their way in and around the cell. When you look at all the receptors on a cell, 50,000 cells, every receptor is responsible for different hormones. The reason you can't control your appetite, the reason you fail on diets, the reason you can't burn fat for energy or even, even when you are consistent, lose weight. This is a cellular problem. So we have to get the toxins in the cell. And again, the five R's becomes part of that process of regulating these pathways and real detox has to do that. But we need real binders around the cell or chelators to bring the toxins. Once we get the cell functioning, we have to grab onto these toxins and make sure they go all the way out of the body. Otherwise you redistribute. That's why I said Corella, these toxins that we hear so much about, they're really not strong enough binders to grab on and not let go. They're weak binders. They have one sulfur group, or uh, you know, whereas real binders have two crab-like claws, if you will, that grab onto the toxins and don't let go. But so we need to upregulate cell function, have a binder out here that's grabbing on, not letting go, and then much of it is brought to the liver where it binds up to bile. In bile, is it's a fat compound that we use to digest fat and it dumps into the gut to do that but it brings the toxins with it because the toxins get in the liver get bound up in the bile problem is this in the lower intestine you're designed to reabsorb that bile and so guess what it brings with it the toxins so you auto intoxicate you're just bringing the toxins to the liver binding with bile dumping it in the gut reabsorbing it to the liver to the gut but reabsorbing it auto intoxication and if it just did that, you know, you'd lose liver function and the ability to detox, but a lot of it's recirculating and going more into the brain. So that's why we use a catcher's mitt in the gut. It's a product called Bind, but it sits in there. It doesn't leave the gut and it grabs that complex and it pulls it out so you don't auto intoxicate. So real binders, upregulating cell function, using a real binder at the cell and around the cell, and then a binder in the gut so you don't auto intoxicate. That system is what I've been teaching for almost 20 years now. And me, you know, formerly working for you, obviously going through your detox program a long time ago, I noticed the way it affected me was I didn't wake up with stiffness. I didn't wake up with um, mm -hmm. brain fog. I just felt lighter. I felt like everything's going to be okay. I just felt, I, it was like this emotional heaviness kind of came off or this weight came off. I just, overall frequency just became higher and like you just you project this different energy then when you feel better you don't crave the foods right or you don't I just I didn't crave what I was craving like my, my body was just like um what's the word I I was just like I'm good like I didn't wake up in the morning with like this anxiety of just I gotta have coffee or I gotta have something to right. you know it was just like oh, I'm good I feel good what are you know it, it's amazing how it changes you know. Yeah, I'm not discounting the fact that someone could use food to deal with an emotion they don't like or create an emotional state to co compensate for, you know, bad stuff that happened when you were younger. I, you know, food can be a replacement for that and create stuff. So I, I don't, that, again, that is a trapped emotion, mm -hmm. which by the way, just like these neurotoxins, they get trapped in your cell membranes and in your cells. It's no different. Those trap traumas and emotions, and you know, then you, we set up all these compensations around food. Th that's an issue. But what so many people that are listening, you're still struggling, have appetite issues, failing, or even when you're perfect, you're still not losing weight. These can be physiological issues, like it was for Aaron and I, and, and so many others. So, you know, it may not be your fault, in fact. So, here's the point is when your cells are working normal and they hear your hormones, everything's great and that's a non-toxic cell, <laughs> you burn fat when you're not eating. So therefore you have no craving, right? It's like, oh geez, there's days where I forget to eat. I'm not disciplined. It's just my body when I'm not eating, it's burning my own fat stores. So I have very consistent glucose levels, insulin levels, the cravings aren't there, all good. So my brain doesn't need to trigger a hormone to trigger my brain to make me eat. Because mm -hmm. see, the point I'm making is this, 
if when the cell's not working, meaning that when you're not eating, that it, your cells can't use fat as energy, guess what it does? It either, it only has two choices, burn muscle down into sugar, which it doesn't want to do because if it has to run from a lion, survive, so to speak, it needs muscle. It doesn't want to do, that's a last resort. We call that gluconeogenesis, but here's what it does typically. It says, okay, hormonally, I can't hear your hormones very well to make me switch over to burn your fat for energy. So I'm not efficiently burning fat for energy because by the way, your cells can only use sugar or fat. And healthy people have the ability to go burn one or the other, right? Go back and forth. If there's sugar, I'll burn it. If not, I'll burn your fat. And that's a hormone shift, okay? So everyone following me so far. So the problem is this. When you're hormonally stuck as just a sugar burner, when you're not eating, it's going to have to give you a craving to have carbohydrates. So you're not going to beat it. You're not because your body wants to survive. It's stronger than you. So instead of burning your muscle into sugar, it gives you a craving you can't resist. So of course you fail. And then you eat the bread, you eat the, you know, whatever it is. So the, the point is, is that you can't win that battle. It's truly not your fault. So the answer is, how do we get your cells to use fat for energy when you're not eating? Well, we have to fix the cell to be, get well. <laughs> that means we have to get the toxins off of these hormone receptors because we get yourselves hearing the hormones, then you start burning fat better and you start losing the cravings. 